Hey everyone, today we have a culvert pipe completely clogged. We're gonna see if this is something we can do or not. See how far under water it is. Got my boots on. Let's take a look. It looks like this happens pretty often, the water going over the road. That's why they put all this rock here. There's an old satellite dish right there smashed on that tree. So this is one that you'd not want to touch. You see the circular motion right here? That's the culvert circling right there. I think that the pipe is just severely undersized. I don't think there's probably much of a blockage at all. Of course because it's flooding there's probably some stuff in front of the culvert but probably not enough where if we were to remove it, things would be going through it. It looks like it was flooding over here even worse earlier. That grass is pushed over, so the flood was worse. That's probably what that sand is right here, maybe. The sand might also be just from them salting and sanding the roads for to stop ice. This is slipping a little bit. Let's get down inside here for a moment. I just want to see how big the pipe is. Alright, so it is a pretty big pipe. It does not look like it's at capacity, so we're going to go ahead and get the rake out and see if we can improve it a little bit at least. Alright everyone, I went ahead and got the rake out. We're going to give this a shot to try to open up a little bit more of that pipe. That looks like a four foot pipe, maybe three and a half. We're going to see if we can get it open a little more. Still seems undersized for this area. By the evidence over there, the grass is all pushed over. This road was underwater a lot more earlier. Nice log cabin up there on the hill. Now let's see what we can do. I want to see exactly where the pipe is. Just about where the whirlpool is. So we're gonna reach around in there. Maybe the whirlpool will get a little bigger. Maybe it won't. I'm just gonna set you guys up right here. Hopefully a car driving through doesn't splash us too much. Let's see if we can get anything done. I'm not feeling anything. Chances are the debris is down at the bottom part of the pipe and there's so much current forcing through the upper sections that we just cannot get down there. I stick the rake down, it tries to suck it right on in. So give it a couple hours, this water will probably be receded down below the road and maybe on the way home we can check it out again. We're going to keep going and looking for more flood issues today. Today is March 7th, 2024. Had a bunch of heavy rain, so I drove into New Hampshire today to see if there's anything we can do. Here comes one truck. Thankfully, 
Hopefully this guy went really slow. All right, everyone. We're coming up to another blockage underneath the main road. We've done this one before. I'm just gonna pull over right now, let some traffic go by. I just drove in here a few minutes ago, and yes, there is a blockage. Last car, I just put it in four wheel drive. Now let's pull in here. This part of the road is unplowed. This is the old main road until they moved it over and made it more passable. Back in the day, this is where you would have driven this road instead. Driving through about 10 inches of snow right now. This part of the road is plowed because there's a DOT gravel pit right here. Doesn't look like they're really using it though. Don't know why it's even plowed. None of the piles have been disturbed. They're covered in snow. So right here underneath the old highway, right next to this brand new telephone pole, there's a culvert here that's blocked by the evidence. This road was also flooded. It was going over the road. There's two blockages here we're gonna undo. We're gonna do the one under the new main road first to leave room for this one back here. Oops, slipping in the mud a little bit. This entire road here, you can tell, was also underwater. That's why there's so much gravel and rocks all over it. This whole thing was underwater. This is all sediment that was put here by these little streams. And there's another stream right here. We're gonna see, is this one's culvert also blocked? Let's take a peek down in there. Um, looks like no, not at all. Are we gonna make it up this road? Someone else drove up here before, I see their tracks. Recently I took off my snow tires because it's been so warm recently and I can tell you the mud tires are much better in the snow than the actual snow tires with metal studs. Yes the metal studs help on actual ice but the very aggressive tires help with this a lot better. I don't have any problem with the snow not falling back out of the tread. These seem to work a lot better for this. Let's get out the rake and put on the big high boots now. All right, everyone, we're all geared up. I got the big high boots on. Got the rake and camera number two. Here's the mud I was just slipping in. Most of this mud is sediment because the culvert is clogged. Because the culvert is clogged, this entire road was probably underwater this morning. There's probably at least four inches of mud, lots of sand left behind. This is where the culvert is. This is culvert number two that we will unclog. First, we're gonna unclog the one under the main road here because all we're gonna be doing is moving a little of this flood over here, if that would even happen. This might also be flooded up to its max. You can see right here, all the erosion, water was going here. It made holes underneath this snow bank. Hopefully there's nothing under this snow bank associated with the second pipe. But you see all this debris here, all this debris is gonna get sent through this pipe. Good thing I got the big high boots on, this is pretty deep. Lots and lots of sediment here has to be eroded and go through this pipe. These pipes are severely undersized. This highway had a major makeover back in the 1990s and that's when they repaved it, regraded it, put all these pipes in. So we're gonna go ahead and unclog this one. But first, I gotta run across the street and set up camera number two. So while I run across the road and set up camera number two, I'm gonna let you guys watch me run across the road. everyone 
Camera number two is on, and I'll take you over across the road with me to show you where it's coming out. All right, the road's all clear. There was a lot of rain today. A lot of rivers are flooding. Not as bad as the flooding last month, but you can see the debris stuck around these trees. This is the Sacco River. Starts in New Hampshire here, and it ends up in Maine. We're just gonna keep on following this. So this is where all that debris will start coming out once we unclog the pipe. So let's set up this camera. I don't think there's gonna be a huge blast, so I don't really have to worry about the camera being taken away, like I do sometimes. Don't think it's gonna get anywhere near the camera. Maybe I'll back it up just a little, just in case. But there'll be lots of debris coming out of here in just a minute. Let me run back across the road. All right, everyone, I'm back over here on camera number one. Let's find this pipe. Woo. There's lots of acorns in here, debris from the oak trees. I think we got it. Camera number two will show it. It'll probably take a good 30 seconds to cross the road. I just made a little hole and we gotta open this thing up. It's barely working. I got it, I feel suction. Definitely the pipe.
All right, we got it going good. Now we got to clean this up before we get over to the other side. Give you a little bit better of a view. We got to clean this up, make sure nothing else gets stuck. Going good. We don't have much flow now that this water's running out until we get across the road working. This one has been blocked for a long time. The sediment built up here is extreme. You see a couple sticks across the entrance, then the leaves build up against it, like you're seeing right now. Okay, we got it fully open now at this point. Nice. But you see how the water's going down into that? This entire ditch is filled up with debris. So we'll do some raking, but first we're gonna head over here and unclog this other pipe. Hopefully it doesn't get stuck underneath the snow bank on its way out, all the debris. Then we'll go over and check on camera number two. So now, the water we release from here, how long will it take to go across both roads? We'll find out in a couple minutes. All right, let's find the next pipe and all this water can drain. Looks like it might be an easy one. The water's crystal clear. I can see it. Well, it's like you just pull the plug. We'll look at it once it drains. Look at it go. Look at those bubbles. We've got a big whirlpool going. Once it drains, we will take a look at it. Maybe it'll drag over more debris and plug itself back up, but I'm sure it's gushing fast. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look what's about to go into the other pipe. 
And you'll see that on camera number two, once it gets over there. Wow, look at this wall of debris moving. Is it gonna plug that pipe? Or is it gonna make it through? Wow. Oh, look at there's more of it right there coming out of that pipe. Oh, here comes more. Was that inside that pipe? I think it was. Look how that's shaped like a cylinder. Look at it rage now. That pipe doesn't look like it's completely clogged, but let's rake at it and make sure it doesn't clog up like it just was. Let me set you guys back up here. Now we gotta do a bunch of raking in the ditch to make sure all this goes over across the road. It doesn't appear to be clogged, but I'm sure there's something in front of it. Wow, it's a lot of water. Not feeling anything, it's just tons of water. show everyone what I'm doing so I'm raking all this debris slightly above it getting it out of the ditch so it doesn't cause future issues while we got the current to do so All right, everyone, we moved most of the sediment, got it to wash through the pipe, anything that could become a future potential clog. So now I'm going to go ahead and have a little bit of fun here before we retrieve camera number two. So let me set you guys up in a different position here. I'm going to break some of that snow bank. Let's see if we can see that go through on camera number two. One, two, three big chunks. Let's see what it does on the other side.
All right, everyone, we made a big improvement in only 20 minutes. Let me show you what I just did. Then we'll run across the road and take a look at that. Pretty out of breath right now. So I jumped up here, got the whole snow bank to cave in. Thankfully, it's a warm day. It wasn't too icy. We could break more and have some fun, but again, we're starting to run out of water now. There's what that culvert looks like. And the other side, look at that. Just about drained. We'll check that out in a moment. Now we're gonna push these ones through and we're gonna race them to the other side. Just having a little fun after the job. I'm kind of out of energy at the moment. And we're running out of water power to help us drag this stuff. But, see all the sediment here? That was completely through here before. Now we minimized it a little bit next time this would happen. We unclogged the same one last year during a big storm. We're not gonna take the rake across the road. I don't think we have to. Now, can I run fast enough to beat these? It's up to the traffic, I think. Good. No traffic, either direction. Let's see if we can beat those. Good, camera number two is still here. Oh, there they are. I almost, I almost didn't make it in time. And there it is, into the Saco River. I'm glad I left this camera with a wide panoramic angle so you can maybe see it making the water a little dirty as it was released. Wow, that went well. That went very, very well. I haven't had such a good blockage in a while. Nice. Shut off camera number two. And time to go back across the road. Awesome. I bet this is going to look awesome on camera number two. All right, I'm back. Water levels are nice and low now. It's probably still dropping. Let's make sure no new blockage has occurred on the entrance of culvert number two. This whole road was underwater before. Probably not because it was flowing this heavily, but because that was literally clogged. And the road is high enough that the blockage was never bad enough for it to go over the top of the road. Looks like there might be a couple things here to clean up. Actually, there's nothing inside the pipe. There's just one stick, and one stick's all it takes. Get stuck, a bunch of leaves build against it, more sticks, then you're done. Sticks are the enemy, not the leaves. And here, more sticks, and we're all clear. There's still a bit draining back in here. Is this sediment 
or is this something else? This is all sediment, look at this. This is all sediment built up. Get a rage of water. Look at this, there's so much debris in the stream bed. So much mud, so much leaves. Get a torrential rain. This, that right there lets loose. It'll be down here. There's more blockages up there that could be loosened by heavy flow. Makes it down here to the undersized culvert. And there you go. A big blockage for next time. Last summer I said I took this road at least three times and I check this one every time. The New Hampshire has an awesome Department of Transportation. The exception is, on days like today, very heavy rainfall. Wow, look at the road. Look at the asphalt moving around. It's so soft beneath the asphalt. The soil feels like I'm walking on dirt, but no, it's pavement. I was saying, they have a great DOT, so you rarely find issues. But on days when it's heavy rain, it's warm out, the snow's melting, making the flooding even worse. So in a situation like this, they're overwhelmed, is the best way to put it. And it looks like all this flooding right here also makes its way down to the same culvert. And look at all the debris right there. Maybe it's the same culvert. Actually, thinking back now, see there's no marker for where they would dig out a culvert. I think there's just not a culvert here. Even during the warmer season, sometimes there's floods right here. Okay, that's what it is. Thinking back, now I remember what the problem was when we did this last year. When we did it last year, there was no snow on the ground. There's a culvert right there that is untraceable. I'm guessing there's a culvert there, which has been plugged and abandoned for years at this point, it seems. Because you see the water going around it. It's going back here. Then there is an actual culvert right there. I just want to take a peek at. Someone else was walking in here. Yeah, you see how deep the snow is? It's say about 10 inches. It doesn't look like we bottomed out at all. The more rugged Jeep-like tires go through the snow way better than the snow tires do. I even questioned the tire store when I bought those ones saying they're not aggressive at all and they say, well, they're just soft. Soft tires is what you want to grip the snow. And I took that out on a lot of roads this winter. No, the studs help a little bit, but aggressive tires are what you want. Look at these, someone is walking a big dog, it looks like. So here's culvert number two. Let's just reach in there. Get that one real fast. So at this point, we got it open, but you see how it's eroding down? It's been clogged such a long time. Look at the mud I'm sinking into. There's so much silt here that now has to erode, and there's certainly going to be sticks in that silt that get eroded, like that one right there. That's gonna probably get plugged up right after I leave, if not in the next storm. 
Now here is where it's coming out. Look at all the debris right there. There was floating debris everywhere. And as the water slowly went down, that's how this all got here. This was all floating. And it got left there when the water went down. So we just slightly elevated this. Let's see if we can get this open. There we go. All right, we got that one completely open. Once again, it was a few sticks, nice and open. Now let's go run on over and see what that one looks like on the other side real fast. Things like trash here, throw it up by the road. New Hampshire's DOT walks all state highways. Once every spring, as soon as the snow's melted, before the plants grow on in every year. Here's where this one comes out. Not too exciting, so I didn't film it. It's still very dirty water because it's still eroding that ditch on the other side. Let's walk on over. Let's see how the second pipe's entrance is doing with the erosion process. Still coming out really good. The exit of pipe number two. You can see how much water there was earlier. See where it melted the snow. It was also probably a little backup, but this evidence here shows that at some times it's so plugged. This whole gully fills up, floods the road here. That's why there's so much mud right here that I just drove through with the truck. This road during storms is typically underwater. I guess it's not a priority. And look, more sticks are appearing out of nowhere because it's digging them out as the silt from the dam I just removed gets eroded. This water is very clean right here. So I'm going to use this moment to wash off the big high boots. Then when I dry off, I can put them away without having to clean them when I get home. But we'll probably use them again today to look at something. There's a little bit on the back side. I wish I had deep water to go in with them, but I don't. Good enough. It feels like there might be a little sand on the back. But now let's see if I can get out of here. All right. Yeah, this is, you can tell all this debris at one point was floating. Even up here, this was all underwater, so deep. At some point, this road was feet underwater because that teeny pipe was clogged. And that's a nice concrete pipe, but probably should have went with a three-footer. One with an entrance big enough when a little pressure builds, the water can snap the sticks in half and gush them through. Very undersized pipes for a state with one of the biggest infrastructure budgets. They go around repaving roads, replacing bridges, 
that don't even need it. While neighboring states have bridge supports that are literally one third of the concrete missing with rebar sticking out. But then they have things like this that are left undersized indefinitely causing floods. Because in a situation like this, if it floods, flash floods, those currents will block that thing immediately and cause a flood. Doesn't matter how good your maintenance is, how good your preventative maintenance is, if the infrastructure literally can't handle the flow that often comes through here. Once again, this feels weird. It feels like soft concrete. You can even see part of the old yellow line when this was the main road. Soft asphalt, I meant to say. I think I just said concrete. Doing nice. No blockage reoccurred. Lots of rain for an area that's supposed to be able to get snow into the month of May and has a growing season that starts June 1st. It's been a very warm winter, one of the warmest I remember. Typically northern New England is cold enough when it snows that snow is there until the spring. We usually don't have these midway thaws. Definitely not this many. The rivers in the area have severely flooded three times this winter. That's not normal. But yet, they haven't broken records yet. One of the rivers near my house came within inches of the all-time record. Unfortunately, didn't hit it. Today, we didn't come near the record, but still flood stage for a lot of the rivers. All right, everyone. Time to move on. See if we can find any more blockages today. So this one is fixed for now, but as you can see, the next big storm, it will be a problem once again. I could just drive out the other way, but I like to take the fun way out through all the mud and snow. We're going to see if we can find any more blockages on the way back into Maine. We have a, another two hours of full daylight. Let's find the drive through the deep snow. Slid back into my old tracks. Nice. One more car. Take it out of four wheel drive. I hope today's video was interesting everyone, thanks for watching and have a great day.